Today, we're going to talk about Azure Event Hubs, namespaces, schema registry, and RBAC. And so the primary organizational structure in Azure Event Hubs are namespaces, and the individual namespaces have an arbitrary number of hubs in them, which in the Kafka world would be topics. Those topics are what the applications read and write from, or IoT devices. And when we do access control on those, you can either do token access or you can do RBAC. The thing that's cool here is they actually do RBAC at two levels. You can do RBAC on the namespace, which means any role that's tied to that RBAC on the namespace has the same privilege across all the hubs. You can also give individual RBAC on a single hub to a single identity, like an app registration. Um, and the reason you would do that is uh, I might have an app that writes to all and reads to all these topics, but I actually want to give a second consumer access to one of the topics. So I'm streaming events on this hub. And so an app, and these are like an error and a success topic, maybe if you're doing uh, like uh, Java spring streams, cloud <clears throat> streams. And then, um, and then I might give a third party read access through this RBAC here, right? So the schema registry they did, I feel like is a complete hack at this point, not complete hack, it's a partial hack, right? So they added schema registry and I think that's really because the Kafka world has uh, does Afro schemas and it makes sense anyway. So this way you can actually register your schema and every time you go to post a message, you can be like, hey dude, is this schema match this one that's supposed to be here? And if not, you can reject it in the Kafka world. So um, in the schema registry, they have this concept of a schema group and you add the schema group to the registry, schema registry. <clears throat> the weird thing is, as of today, you can only have one group per registry. So I don't know if they're thinking of adding more groups later or what, but it's just weird. You got to add this group and then you add your schemas into that group. And those schemas would logically line up with the hubs. So there's no binding here. It's kind of like, you know, if you're in the Kafka world, the schema registry is a completely separate app. And so they kind of did that here too. Right, but they're logically bound. So in theory, each one of these schema represents the schema for one of the hubs. Um, and then the RBAC on this, <clears throat> which I think is a little weird. I guess it might make sense. This is actually what got me to write this. The schema registry RBAC is only on the namespace, right? So if, if you wanted to let people auto register, different producers auto register schemas, um, and you were going to talk to these hubs, uh, basically the deal is everybody would have the same permissions. I'm happy to be proven wrong on this. So there's two weird things here on the schema registries. One is hubs just exist in the namespace, but the schema register schemas actually exist inside a schema group on the namespace, on their schema, in the schema registry on the namespace. So the depth of these is a little different. They're organized differently. Um, it's not clear to me whether this whole schema registry should be an outside thing instead, or they should fix this. But like I said, um, so there's some asymmetric here. One is the hubs are deeper or shallower. They're closer to the namespace than the schemas are. And the other is RBAC can either be on the namespace and inherited, or you can override that or add additional RBAC on the hubs directly. And you can't do that on the schemas. And I'll show you this a little bit. So we go to, you know, our friend, uh, the portal and we click on the event hub. Um, so I just wanted to point out this uh, GitHub repo is actually what builds this. If you have a Azure account, you can just run the scripts in this order and you'll end up with what I'm showing you. So we're going to go to this namespace here um, and uh, we can look at the IAM on this. And so here we have the role assignments. You can see here this. So this is on the namespace. On this resources, I have applied for user assigned managed identity, and this is for a VM. Uh, we're going to let this, uh, whoever has this uh, role has the hub re data receiver and the data sender, so it can send to any event hub on this. And then on the schema registry, I did the same thing, and that's so that if we're going to auto update the schema and register schemas from that virtual machine, that'll work. The only other weird thing is if you're gonna wanna see the schemas that you register, right? So if I go to a schema group and I actually wanna see the schemas on this page, uh, then you gotta add yourself as a schema registry contributor or a reader. Um, reader might work, but I did both. I personally think this is dumb. Uh, this is the only place where the uh, subscription owner can't read something that I've ever seen. I'm sure there are others, uh, but it, means you can't see that. So, okay. So if the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you event hubs here. So if we were to go to the event hubs, this is one of the event hubs that I created in the GitHub repo. And here 
uh, we can look at the IAM and you can see that the IAM was inherited, right? Parent resource. So um, in this case, whatever role was assigned at the parent as a event hubs data sender or receiver, it's actually also inherited down on this hub. And the same thing uh, with the schema permissions, but they're not useful here. And with the weird thing here, wow, man, it changed it again. I don't know what's happening there. This is actually in preview, even though nowhere in very few places in the Microsoft docs does it tell you that. Um, so if we go back here and we go to the schema registry itself, you can see, and this takes a while, uh, it'll actually bring up the schema registry and uh, a schema group, right? So this is the schema registry. This is the schema group in there. I made this as an Avro backward compatible schema group. And then what you can do is you can add your own schemas. Uh, these should be all done through API and the apps. I'm hoping that we can do this with Spring uh, on the Java side. And that's really the market they're kind of going after with this. So that's it, right? Uh, if you go to this repo and you run these scripts, it'll log you in. It'll create the resources, ignore the ones with the X for now. Um, and it'll create the uh, user assigned identity we talked about and the other pieces. Like I said, the only thing I would probably remind you is that if we go into this namespace and we look at the IAM, um, you gotta add yourself as a SEMA registry contributor or a schema. See there here, you can see it doesn't say preview on it, right? Even though when you go on the other screen, this actually says preview in parentheses on these two. So I don't know what it's doing, uh, but it's cool. Uh, basically, that's all you need to know, right? So this is how Azure Event Hubs are set up. There's a little bit of asymmetry in how they're organized and how the RBAC works. But uh, for most people, that won't be a big deal. Uh, I hope this was useful. Have a great day.